So first of all, not too much on the lace, baby. Not too much on the hairline because I'm still new to wigs, honey. But, you know, we tried our best. You know, I want to look good for my girls. And, you know, we need to get them sponsorship points rolling in. You know how we do. It's another one. I saw you walking down no Melrose. It looked like the Hey there, my name is Siren and welcome to Siren Speaks Podcast. Today we're doing a virtual podcast and I'm so excited. So if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, I definitely recommend that you tap into the YouTube channel because you get to see all my crazy faces and you get to, you know, get a little bit more of my personality. <laughs> so today's episode is brought to you by Love is Blind with this whole discourse with AD and just the over-sexualization of black women. Originally when I had scripted this episode, I had Chloe Bailey in mind because she was going through a lot of scrutiny about her amplifying her sexiness and essentially being performative with her sexiness. And I've just had a few questions about like sexualization and what it means to be sexualized, especially coming from someone who aptly is called the siren, you know? I am not gonna hold y'all. I love being sexy. Even today, you know, I'm trying, this This shirt don't even go this way. This shirt does not do like a little side action, but you know, I like to sprinkle a little bit of hoe in there. You know, sprinkle a little bit of hoochie always, but what would I like to sprinkle a little bit of hoochie in there. I remember making a tweet a while back about how being sexualized and being objectified is not really the flex or the compliment that most people think it is, especially when you're someone that is conventionally attractive or you're someone that embraces your sexiness. So basically I posed the question, why can't y'all give a normal compliment? Why does your compliment always gotta be sexual? And then I followed up the tweet with a statement of how Y'all be giving sexual compliments to women that you'll never or aren't And you know, it caused a little bit of a stir because I feel like that is weird. I really feel like it's weird because as a woman, especially a dark skinned black woman, though I may not be the most curvaceous, curvaceous or whatever, I find that I feel like as a woman, you get shamed for so many stupid things. Like you're ashamed for being attractive. You're ashamed for being sexy. And it's like, you're shaming me for existing as I am, for existing in my body, for existing in my skin, for existing, just for existing. And I just find that to be very weird. I know that one of my biggest pet peeves ever is to be overly sexualized. I actually hate that shit. If every time I have a conversation with you, it's always like a sexual innuendo or sexual joke, I just don't think you're intelligent. Even if it's not the opposite sex, because I've been sexualized by both men and women. So it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of one of those things that I kind of am used to in a way. I don't know. I almost feel sad to say that I'm used to it because it's not something that I should have to be used to. Now, clearly, you know, with this little shoulder decollete thing we got going on, I am not a prude. I'm not a prude. I've never been a prude. I'm not ashamed of my sexuality. I'm not ashamed to be a woman. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to embrace my sensuality, my essence of womanhood and femininity and all of the things but being constantly overly sexualized or being constantly sexualized especially when i'm doing like mundane things i just find it uncomfortable i don't like when i'm trying to have a conversation with someone or the conversation is supposed to be intellectual and it just always goes boom straight to my looks and it's not to say that i don't appreciate compliments or I don't appreciate words of affirmation but if you know me you know I'm not the biggest words of affirmation person I honestly prefer acts of service I think my issue with being sexualized is that I don't look at myself in a sexual way because this is my body this is how my face looks this is how I look this is who I am I'm just existing this is me being, I'm used to myself. 
and I'm confident in myself and I love myself. I embrace my sexuality. I embrace all the aspects of who I am because I know I'm a multifaceted person. Where the issue comes is I'm not in a situation where sexualization should be happening because I'm not having the sex and you know I'm not with um, a romantic partner or anything like that. And the conversation just always goes to something very horny, like, ew. At its core, I don't believe that sexiness is a bad thing, especially as a heterosexual woman who, you know, enjoys being around men, okay? I love me a little bit of the men's, the fine men's though, the fine men's. The issue that I have is that it just seems to be a low vibrational conversation when it's just always about sex or it's always about how I look or it's always about like my body. It reads very boring. And as someone who enjoys having her brain stimulated and enjoys having a multitude of conversations, just a constant, just a constant verbalization of my looks is uncomfortable. And that is kind of what I noticed with AD. We've seen that AD has just been the source of a lot of scrutiny and it's essentially for being a hypersexualized black woman. And I'm sure we've seen the discourse around how her castmates had hypersexualized her and her, you know, fiance, Claire, whatever, sexualized her too. And the shifts from Acknowledging that she's been hypersexualized and overtly sexualized and blaming her for how people are perceiving her is wild. It's very wild. And it goes to show that as a black woman, just you being is enough to trigger people. It's crazy how being who you were created as, even working hard for the body that you have, that that can be the source of so much contention for you just accepting who you are, loving who you are, and you know, being proud and being confident of who you are. A lot of the comments have kind of like shifted to saying that she has unconfident. And the people that are saying this are just saying this with so much certainty that they just know that she's unconfident and that she's living with her body. And <laughs> so funny because the main episode that I know is the cause of this was when a white woman, Chelsea, AKA Megan Unfox, as coined by Jessie Wu, basically tried to embarrass her because her fiance was like, yeah, that girl, that woman, 80, 80 stacks. 80 got that ass. She fine, she bad, 80 got that ass. And Jimmy, he told that to Chelsea, like privately in confidence, and Chelsea made it her business to draw attention attention to 80's body by saying something to the effect of, 80, how you get an ass like that? Or how you get a butt like that, girl? Like trying to be playful, like the down for her man type, like, oh yeah, I'm so down. <laughs> I'm so down. I'm so down, I'm so down, I'm so down. And it didn't work out in her favor because she thought she was gonna embarrass 80. And 80 was like, Squats and Jesus, girl. And she, you know, she kind of did like a cute little shake. Like she did a little, girl, let me tell you. She did that. Jimmy then proceeded to talk to AD and apologize. And you know, the man was turning tomato red. It was like, I don't know why she embarrassed me like that. I don't know. You know, I don't know why Chelsea embarrassed me like that. Um, I feel so embarrassed, so embarrassed. So embarrassed. Like he kept saying how embarrassed he felt, but never once did he acknowledge how AD may have felt, which, I mean, are we surprised? Like, just being a black woman and existing, it's like, I don't know what it does to people, but it creates like the ugliness and the, the, the selfishness in people. It's so weird. Don't you dare be a confident woman and be audacious with it. Like, you have the girl seething, honey. And you know the crazy part was, Chelsea had the audacity to be upset. Like, girl, you play stupid what? Stupid games and you win what? Stupid prizes. I felt no amount of sorry for her. Tight blue dress was showing off that figure. Honestly, look the girl, she worked for that. Look, she's young, she's sexy. Then following that, right? 
there was this awkward moment between 80 and between 80 Clay and Jeremy, who was Laura's fiance. Yeah. Jeremy was Laura's fiance, where Laura jokingly told Jeremy to bean dip 80's breast. So literally sexually harass, grope, honestly, sexually assault 80. And then when I honestly was so angry because what the fuck? I was so angry, but what really got to me was that Cl Cliff chap. What really got to me was that Clay wasn't angry enough. He was just more like, oh, it's fine. Like, don't do that. Like, that shit is not cool, whatever. But it wasn't like, I don't know. It's basically like Eddie was defending herself again. But it's like, even in the defense of herself, I still felt like she had to kind of minimize that too because you start acting all theatrical or whatever. And now it's, oh my God, you're tripping, which Laura said as much, but it's like, oh my God, you're tripping. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. It's giving me a compliment or, oh, or with Jimmy, like, oh, he's giving you a compliment. So like, be grateful or whatever. You know how they be trying to tell us be grateful. Like, fuck you. Um, in the case of Jeremy, like, oh, it was a joke, but but it's like, those things are hurtful. Like, that's not a joke and it's not a compliment. I feel uncomfortable, but I have to worry. It's almost like she had to worry about every making everybody else feel comfortable at her own expense. And that shit I didn't like. At her own expense and that shit I didn't fucking like at all. I didn't like it, but I could 100% relate to it. So then when she proceeds to have the conversation with Laura, like, hey sis, that's not cool. Like, we, you know, we supposed to be for us. We supposed to be for us. Um, Laura tried to gaslight her. Laura was trying to minimize it. She was trying to tell her like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. Like, why would he say that? They're so childish, made a big deal. But it's like, this, like take all that shit out, right? Why would you even tell him to do that? Like, you're 30. You're like a 30 plus year old woman. What about that is a joke? What about that is funny? Literally nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing about that is funny. And then on top of that, that's supposed to be your homegirl, your friend, and that's how you do her? Child, with friends like that, who needs enemies? I think it's very possible that AD, you know, likes her body and is proud of it, but also is trying to find that balance between loving her body, expressing her body through her fashion or whatever, and dealing with being constantly objectified and over-sexualized and honestly, same, relatable. I feel like I kind of teeter that balance too, even though I may have a more acceptable body type or a more petite frame or whatever that is not so readily sexualized, I guess, I don't know. It can still be really disheartening when people just choose to focus on something you can't control. When people choose to demonize you, when people choose to demonize your existence. And for those people that are just so adamant on like, oh my God, like 80 is, oh my God, 80 is leaving with her body because her face is not that cute or blah, blah, whatever bullshit nonsense that they say because the girl's a knockout. Like, stop it, haters. The girl's a knockout. But for the people that are so confident in saying that, I'm just like, did y'all miss the parts where she was turned off and off by Clay trying to figure out what she looked like, where she said that the main reason that she's on this show is because she wants to be loved and be accepted and get in, or she wants to be loved and accepted for who she is, that she sees more value in herself than just her body. I'm like, did we miss that part in the conversation or is it, selective remembering selective or is it selective remembering i feel like she's someone who fully embraces and embodies her who fully embraces and embodies who she is and i think that that's beautiful it just sucks that by you being you by you existing that can be a source of so much contention for others but it's like you cannot control how you are, you cannot control what you're blessed with, you cannot control 
your existence. You, you're you just here. You didn't even ask to be here. You're just here. And you're just doing the best that you can do with the things that you have. So, being sexualized is not fun. It's not cool. <laughs> I'm multifaceted, I'm multidimensional, and those being deserve respect and love. Like, I understand as a woman, you know, I guess our currency is in how we look, but it can be very tiring, especially in the dating world. It's just so fucking exhausting. There's just so much to women, to people, than just their sexual attributes. People are diverse, or I would hope that they are, that they're diverse and they have other things that they wanna talk about. ...about sexuality and pose this question. Is it possible to find someone sexy without sexualizing them? So before we even get into that, I wanna really define what sexualization means. So to sexualize something or someone means to make them sexual or consider them in a sexual way. It is, in essence, to endow with sexual significance, feeling, etc. When I look up the definition of sexy, it is a descriptor of people and things that someone thinks is sexually exciting or sexually attractive. So it's basically intended to excite sexually, erotically even. And I think that that's where my annoyance really comes from because that was a sexy person. There's more than just that. You know how like there's people who are tall and they make being tall their identity or they have like a lot of money and so they make being affluent their identity? That is not what sexiness is, at least to me. Sexation is okay and even requires, especially, you know, when you're having relations with a partner, you, I would assume would want that person to be sexually attracted to you and have that sexual longing for you. But I don't know if it has to do with social media or this new di or this new digital age with breeding that over familiarity and breeding that like uh, and breeding that parasocial relationship. But I just feel like a lot of the things that people say online they would not have the guts to say that shit in person. Like, I feel like a lot of these any windows and jokes and stuff like that is said either while people are drunk or like uh, people saying it online, especially when it comes to strangers, because at the end of the day, parasocial relationship or not, you don't fucking know me. You don't fucking know me. So why on earth are you talking to me like that? I know you. I mean, you can call me a sad, but I am a loveful girl. As a Libra, okay, October Libra stand up, yeah. As a Libra, I'm a lover girl, so I love love. I, I need it all. Now, I know at this point, there's a few of y'all rolling your eyes at me like, girl, what the hell are you talking about? Because men are visual creatures, so of course, they're gonna focus on your outer appearance. And I'm not necessarily negating that or saying that that's a bad thing. But when that is your primary focus and that's all you focus on, for me, it just reeks of like very carnal, just very caveman. <laughs> just very unevolved because I don't know. Again, it could be, it could be me being a Libra. I don't know. Or it could be me being a nerd, but having that mental Having that mental stimulation, that emotional stimulation, it does way more for me than just the constant. It's very dehumanizing to be objectified because essentially what you're saying to that person is that this is all they're good for, whether you mean to do it inadvertently or not. That's basically the messaging that you're giving. And it's just gross. Male or female, it's, it's just gross. Nobody wants to feel less than a human. For us to be more empathetic and just more aware of how our actions impact people and how our words impact people. Um, especially when you talk, you know, and when you talk to someone, when you talk to someone, make sure you're really talking to the person and you aren't talking from a fleshly place, okay? 
and also utilize reading the room time and place i think that that's extremely important and it's a lost art people don't appear to be thoughtful anymore and it really shows i think we got to get to a point where we're asking ourselves just because this is a norm does it mean that it's right you know, when you're talking to someone, especially as a man, now I'm just speaking to men, like as a man, when you're talking to a certain woman, you're saying certain things, especially a woman that you don't know, question yourself, why do I feel so comfortable talking to this person like that? And you'll see that it's probably rooted in ego, it's probably rooted in arrogance, it's probably rooted in entitlement, sometimes it's security, because that's a woman you don't know and you're making these weird sexual innuendos and sexual jokes. It's, it's unbecoming. So that's all I have got for y'all today. Thank you so much for joining me on this virtual episode of Science Speaks. I love y'all and I will catch you guys on the next episode. Bye.